Okay, again, welcome again, everyone, uh, to the webinar on the new version of VizX Edit with its new illustration tools. Uh, the agenda for our webinar today is we're going to start with a, just an introduction, uh, going through the housekeeping rules, an overview of, uh, of our company, uh, and then the uh, body of the webinar, the slide presentation, followed by a live demo. And then we'll summarize, wrap up, and then we'll have a Q&A for questions. And then wrap, wrap up with the um, final closing information. Uh, the housekeeping rules we'll use for today, all attendees will be muted for the duration of the webinar. If you experience any problems, use your chat box over there to communicate with us. Uh, we recommend using the voice over internet uh, for your audio, but you can also, there's call-in numbers there too for those that don't have uh, um, headsets or audio on your computer. And then um, there's a little, again, there's a little chat box there I'm highlighting, uh, showing you where you can uh, chat with us. And then finally, questions at the end of the webinar. For those of you not familiar with Larson Software Technology, we're a company, we're based in Houston. We were founded in 1984 and we've uh, positioned ourselves as experts in the CGM graphics language and been working with it for over 30 years. We're a member of CGM Open, founding member of CGM Open, the organization that uh, supports CGM. <clears throat> we develop um, integrative uh, graphic software uh, for creating uh, maintaining and deploying technical graphics. We promote the CGM uses for the free uh, CGM and TIFF viewer and um, Larson technology simplifies the graphic workflow for technical publication prof professionals, engineers, and geotechnical professionals. So that all said, we're let's launch into the to the webinar and I'll turn it over to Dave Manick. Hi, good morning everybody, uh, or good afternoon or good evening. Uh, thank you, Don, for the uh, invite today to present uh, VizX Edit, the, uh, the, new, or the new version. Um, so we'd like to set some objectives uh, for the webinar. So obviously we want to try and describe and demonstrate the, the new product to you today and with a particular focus on illustration, creation and, uh, and delivery. Um, we're going to present some new illustration tools. Uh, we'll also have a, a very brief look at the 3, 3D CAD import, which is in a very early beta stage at the moment. Um, and we'll look at some of the existing uh, tools that um, VizX Edit supports around metadata for hotspots and delivering compliant uh, CGM files for the uh, aerospace and defense industries. So just as a brief introduction, I think probably all of you will appreciate that uh, illustration or technical graphics is a significant part of the publications process and um, has been for some time and probably will grow in the future as we deliver more interactive type manuals where graphics do help the navigation through information. So we would always say that uh, if you're in the production environment, you want efficiency from your illustrator and writer. So you need really good software tools to achieve that. Um, your production process will probably depend on your source data, uh, the legacy data that you have available. And also you need to publish in a format that, that's suitable for your deployment method, um, which could be print or probably more common now, it might be a web delivery or electronic manual delivery. But all these factors result in a piece of software for illustration that is obviously flexible and able to do all these different things. So in technical graphics, um, the illustration software is a significant part, as I just said earlier. And you need something that's flexible and obviously cost effective when you're creating these illustrations. So uh, probably looking for good import and conversion features, good illustration, editing, uh, the ability to enhance illustrations and to publish them in the correct formats.
So I've just come up with some scenarios where um, you're probably going to use the illustration tool. Um, you might fit into all of these or categories or, or just one of them, but uh, creation is still required. So probably most common nowadays is to try and create from CAD, be it 2D or 3D, but you still could be uh, tracing photographs and so forth. So you need something that can do conversion and good illustration tools. It could be you're just purely re revising uh, existing data or existing illustrations. So you need something with good editing and illustration tools. Or you're just enhancing illustrations. So it could be that you're just adding value to them via hotspots or annotations. So again, need tools to do that particular task. And finally, you need to be able to uh, actually publish the file into a format that's compliant and capable within your environment. So either compliant means you need to su uh, support a specific format or capable that it needs to be able to go into the, your particular deployment environment. So what's the main functions of VizX Edit? So what we tried to do in this particular part of the slide pack is give you something to take away. Uh, so you've got a document uh, that tells you what some of the over, an overview of the functions of VizX Edit. So uh, comprehensive import capabilities. So we certainly from the 2D side, we can uh, import uh, DWG and many DXF, many of the 2D formats. But um, Larson have just beginning to look at the 3D uh, side of the house. So importing 3D data uh, into the software as well. Um, we can support varied formats, including raster and vector data. And we'll look at that in more detail as we go along. Um, VizX said it is a native CGM editor, um, possibly the only nat truly native CGM ed editor on the market today. And it includes all the industry profiles that you may be familiar, familiar with, such as S1000D and ATA and PIP from the oil and gas industry. From a drawing and editing tools perspective, we have a, a, an isometric grid which is active and also my isometric drawing tools as well. And we'll be showing some of those today. And there's also ability to do automatic and manual hotspotting. And of course, a call out tool if you need to actually annotate the illustration. So from a format point of view or data exchange, um, these, are, these are formats that uh, Visit said it co uh, currently support. So you can see it's quite extensive uh, from an opening or import point of view and also saving we can save as the CGM SVG TIFF and JPEG so the major ones that you would actually be using to get your files into uh, another piece of software for publishing the isometric grid um, has certain properties so you can change the grid color you can make it active or non-active um, it can be flat it, it doesn't have to be isometric it can always be a flat grid if you're doing more functional or schematic type illustrations and it has a snap to ability and also the elements can be snapped to as well so this is one area that uh, Larson has really Im improved the software uh, from an illustrator's point of view so you can see here with his various drawing tools for the align and ellipse uh, that automatically fly find the correct ellipse value for the for the grid that we're using at that time in this case isometric We've also extended the, um, the line weights out, so we're now supporting a, a kind of more um, easy to use or you can actually have line styles pre-populated pre or create your own. So this was something that wasn't in the previous version. We can create uh, call-outs uh, with the specific tool, so just sequential numbering. Uh, we can alter the shape. We can do different connecting lines. And it also does auto hotspotting as well. We also create a halo around the line as well to throw it away from the illustration. I said hotspotting, it can be automatic, we say with the annotation or call out tool. Um, but also it can be, you can manual hotspot or as a auto hotspot uh, function as well if you're working with raster data. And you'll see when we do the demonstration that this is all contained in a tree view, so it's easily accessible, so we can train the, uh, so you can change the attributes really easily of the hotspot. 
as I mentioned earlier, there's a 2D uh, CAD import and also a PDF import as well, which is becoming more important as a way of uh, transferring files, say, from Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. So good uh, con uh, control of the uh, files when it comes through through the PDF, but also really good control of the DWG. You can see on the right there all the layers that we could turn off and on when we're importing the data. So good control over the 2D CAD data. And also, as I said earlier on, we're actually we're in a be uh, very early beta stage of uh, bringing in 3D files. So we'll show that today, but it's uh, by no means finished. But we thought we'd give you a quick preview, or loss and wood of the uh, work done so far. And finally, the compliance to the specification. So uh, all the major CGM profiles are supported, such as S1000D, ATA iSpec 2200, and also uh, PIP for the oil and gas. And you have control of all these CGM attributes as well. Okay, so that first part was uh, on the slides was just as you have a document to take away. This will be available for download. Um, after the demonstration today or presentation. So we thought that'd be a good takeaway for you just in case you can't get back and see the recording that we did. So we're now in VizX Edit. This is the uh, the environment that we're going to be working in. Uh, and as I said, this will be an overview of the software. It will be a detailed demonstration, but please contact Don and uh, that can be organized with the, with the team in Larson. So we're going to talk about the interface first. So what I'm going to do is just open uh, a document. Uh, there's some recent documents I've opened before, so I could quickly go to something I'm working on, or I can go to open here. So these are all the CGM files I've got available in this particular directory. So I'm just going to open this particular one. Uh, this is the famous, if you're familiar with S1000D, this is the famous bike. So we can see we can bring it in here. There's a grid in the background which doesn't really actually um, go with this particular illustration as it's flat, so I can just switch that out. Um, so we'll just talk about the interface here. We've got um, windows that you can drag off with various tools, or you can drag them back to the bar. Uh, so very easy to tear uh, these off the, off the dock here and also have them floating. We also have the tree view. So this tree view is, is quite unique in the respect it gives us a visibility of the objects on the actual illustration. So you can see on the, on the right here we have hotspots, uh, which has been generated for this CGM. So if we move down, I can click on here, and we should be able to highlight the hotspots on here. It'd be easier if I actually use this. So we can see the hotspots there. So, and we can modify the attributes of the hotspot from here as well. A new addition to the uh, software is the floating window we have on the right, which gives us control of the line, fills, uh, callouts, and text. So it's easy and accessible to actually modify um, certain kind of uh, properties or attributes of the, uh, of the software. So that's a new feature that we've just put into version 11. Okay, so the, uh, the other thing I want to show you here is the grid that we can the properties of the grid. So let's bring up the grid setup. So as I mentioned earlier, you can change this to isometric. We can change the color of the grid. Uh, we can change the increments, the, uh, the divisions on it as well. So we can uh, actually have a different snap to distance. So you can see it could easily change to isometric, although it's not relevant for this particular um, illustration. Okay, so let's bring up a new document. I've just preset this, so this is a bit more like a template. So you can see this is already set with the isometric grid in the background. I uh, can obviously zoom in on this. So let's just zoom in on the, this area here. And we've just got a simple, simple line. Uh, I can change the line weight of this just by uh, choosing it in the line styles here. And I can begin to draw a new line on the grid. So at the moment it's actually free from the grid, uh, but if I click here you can see this will actually now snap to the grid. This will just align and this is where I can turn my grid off and on. So now it should be snapping. I don't know if you can 
it's difficult to see on the webinar, but you can hopefully see that it's snapping to the different axis of the grid. And again, I can change that line weight. Let's just bring up another line. So if I turn the actual snap to off, it will now be free from the grid. So you can see that I'm not snapping to any particular point anymore. So it's pretty much free. And I can free the, the line up altogether if I turn the grid off. So it could go at any angle. And I can change this to, to thin. So very straightforward to begin to draw with the grid. That's obviously just the line tool. So let's just uh, remove what I have here. I'm just going to zoom out slightly. And what we'll do is now get the ellipse tool. Um, and as you expect, it actually aligns to the grid. So whatever direction I pull in, it's going to allow or align to the grid that I've got set at that time. So it's the correct ellipse value. And the same would apply, you would hope, for the rectangle. Again, if I pull out, then you can see that it's now aligning to the grid again. I release, and it puts it at that particular angle. And the same applies here. I can go around and complete this very quickly, and you can see we begin to work in the isometric mode. And you would hope, obviously, the ellipse would work and on the other angles, and it does. If you just pull in the right direction, and you can see very quickly if we can begin to work in different planes of the isometry. Okay, I want to zoom in on this particular area here. And you can see that we need to get rid of these hidden lines. So we have um, kind of a traditional knife tool which I can then edit at these points. So I've got these intersection points here and that just should allow me to remove this back edge. So let's just delete. And then this particular line, if you, if you use thick and thin, you could begin to actually put that technique on as well. I'm going to use the knife tool here, here again, just to remove, or just to cut the here at the top and the bottom. And then I could change this to thick as well. So you begin to see that I could easily, if I had a house style of thick and thin, which is still probably predominantly used in illustration, that that would be quite straightforward for me to actually uh, uh, create. I'm just going to go back to the line tool, drag out. So the other line that we set up previously was projection. So I can, I've got the projection line, which could be a chain dot. Um, we could also have a halo around this. I've just uh, left this particular one at point 0.2 or 2. So I could change it just to show you that we can increase the size of the halo. I apologize, sometimes it's difficult to see in the webinar what we've actually done, but I'll zoom in. You can see here that it's actually put the halo around the line. So another technique that's common, we could easily replicate within VizX Edit. So let me just zoom out. So this ellipse here, I'll just zoom out one more level so I can pull this away. So this ellipse here, you can see that we, um, that we actually broke it but we have this ability to actually reform it. So if I need to, I can just reform it back again, and then we can move it back into our area here. <clears throat> so even though we've broken the ellipse, we can reform it quite easily so to re you reuse it again. So that's just a taste of the illustration tool side. It's something that uh, Larson have been working hard on to, to give some really extensive uh, or ex extended abilities over the uh, previous product. So I think it's really looking good from an illustrator's point of view. So let's move on to, uh, to call out. So I'm going to open up another file. And let's just look at the, this has actually got call outs on already. So we can see that they're sequential. Um, so it's already annotated. Uh, what's interesting as well, from an interface point of view, you see the illustrations are tabbed, so I can easily go back or move between the illustrations as well, so I can easily copy and paste between them. So this is a really nice feature, this tab, and we can move these around actually in hierarchy as well. And we can cascade them as well, which is really good for comparing and so forth. 
Okay, let me just go back. And you can also easily uh, close things down without trying, so that's another thing. Um, so now we've opened, um, reopened this. You can see on the left the hotspot properties. So if I just uh, scroll down, we can see that the annotation tool, um, we've got the, uh, the hotspot on the graphic here. So we've got the bearing. So we can actually modify this. So if the actual, say, screen tick um, changes, uh, then we can easily change the, the tooltip to suit. So we've got all the properties of the hotspot easily accessible if we need to modify an existing illustration. So this could have been done in another piece of software, brought into here via CGM format, and then we can still revise this quite easily. So as I said, this is a, a kind of a unique part to the software, uh, this ability to look at a tree view of the illustration. So if I've got um, here, I've got this uh, particular illustration, the same one, but no annotations on it. So to do, um, to, the, to do the annotations, I think the good place to start would be actually to create a new layer. So, so we can add a layer to this and we'll call it annotation. Could also add a description if we needed one. So you can see it's added it to the uh, to the tree view. If I then click on this, this is now the active layer. I probably want to turn off the uh, the grid al uh, alignment because the annotation might need to go at a different angle. I can also go to the call out dialog. So we can start our numbering at one. We could say it was a circle, a straight line, and there's other various things we can set here as well. But uh, if I've got a pen set with that particular property already, that's the one it's going to pick up. So here's the call-out tool. So it's a specific tool, uh, tool on the toolbar. So now I can start annotating at this particular point. And I actually left the line, not on the call-out one, so that was a, not a good start. So let's just now pull around and we'll do the, our next the two. So you can see it's sequential. And uh, we could have a dot on the end. So again, your house style could be uh, mimicked in here or copied. And you can see the hotspots are actually being added on the left-hand side as I pull them over. So it's just automatically happening. If I go to modify, I then could add that tooltip in. If I make a mistake, I can go back. And I can make that the seal, perhaps. And also, we'll, we'll actually do number two as well. We can change that name as well in there, which is, would be useful if it, we wanted to identify them a different way. So let's just call that washer. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is save this. Save this illustration. Or save as. Just going to put it on the desktop so I can easily find it. And I'm just now going to go into um, this is a, a new product from uh, Larson, a new viewing technology uh, for HTML5. So I'm just going to open this file which is on my desktop. And hopefully it's going to come true. Here it is. So you can see here's the, the till tips, the seal, the washer. And so there's no plugin involved with this new technology from uh, Larson. It's uh, basically based on HTML5, so no plugin required really. And he has all the functionality of the, the normal Larson technology for uh, that you would get with an ActiveX control. So if you're interested in that, obviously Don will be able to to help you with that as well. So I just wanted to show you that how you would take the uh, illustration as a CGM file into our viewing environment, which could be also in our IETM. Okay, we also have various other hotspotting abilities as well. As I mentioned, we're not going to show those today, but I would suggest if you are interested that Don could give you a separate demonstration on those. But we can do manual hotspotting as well, so you could just designate an area. You can transform an object into a hotspot, and we 
and the tool also will do auto hotspotting on raster information so perhaps a legacy illustration that's in a TIFF format it will look at the annotations on there or the text on there and auto hotspot it via an OCR uh, capability so uh, certainly worth looking at if you have a lot of hotspotting to do on your files so now we're going to look at the uh, the CAD side so I'm going to open again another document so this time we're going to look at the DWG format so I'm just going to change this to DWG and we have a particular file here this is a is it 2D and I'm just going to set it to default we have some ways of actually optimizing the file as well just to make it easier to work with we can see with this particular DWG it has a lot of layers associated with it so a lot of extraneous information we're probably not going to need so uh, this one even has um, kind of French and Spanish trans, uh, translations on it because this particular company uses uh, puts that into their CAD data so they can reuse it um, either as the CAD data itself or into the technical publications so what I'm going to do is eliminate some of the layers that I know I don't need so you would need some knowledge of the, of the file before you start removing them but you can, obviously you can trial and error as well so it's probably best if I turn the grid off so you can see this so we've got the um, illustration that was done in the CAD system this is 2D it's not 3D uh, here's the text that's come through because I left one particular layer on we could easily just click on this and delete or if I go back then I could have I could actually just delete that last layer and remove it so let's just bring that in again and it was this particular layer the text layer and usually the, the layers would have some kind of logical names and now just finish up with the illustration itself so this is a really good way of actually obviously reusing your 2D data so this could also be like an engineering drawing as well which we could uh, help begin to reuse in the in the software as well okay you can see the tabs are building up here with all the illustrations so now we come to the um, the 3d side as I said this is very early beta so um, Donald again if you want to cap, uh, contact Don after today's presentation he'll be able to tell you a bit more about where it's going in the future so we're still in DWG uh, this particular file here is is a, from Inventor so I'm just going to bring this in um, you can see here we can choose a projection so at the moment the we have to choose a projection before we actually uh, bring it in obviously that's something that can be changed um, we can bring it in shaded so let's just do that to begin with so this was the, the uh, piece of equipment we saw earlier on in the slide presentation. So this is just a shaded view, just so we can look at the illustration. And we could reuse this perhaps uh, somewhere else. Or we could bring it in with the hidden eye removal. So let's just uh, try that. So again, same thing, we've, we're using the same view. So at the moment we're having uh, we're seeing the surface data. Um, I know Don's working on removing that, and that should be done uh, fairly soon. So that will be gone, and then from there, uh, I believe Don will be looking how we begin to manipulate this model within this environment. So perhaps change the projection in here, and obviously begin to explode things and so forth. So something that would be obviously uh, a lot more usable for uh, the illustrator. I said this is very early beta so this wouldn't be in version 11 to begin with okay I could have also obviously changed that viewpoint as well uh, before I brought it in uh, so finally what I want to go to is the the saving of the file uh, so I've pretty much followed the slides that we showed earlier on so we've kind of gone to from origination creation adding value and enhancements into the final part was where we would publish the file so 
we obviously have CGM, that's the, the software, the native file format, but you can also save as TIFF, PNG, JPEG, and uh, SVG, uh, Scalable Vector Graphic. For CGM, there's a support for all the uh, different specifications, so as I mentioned earlier, PIP for the uh, oil and gas industry, ATA version 4, or just the standard ATA, but also S1000D and WebCGM as well. So everything you would expect to, to support from a compliance point of view is there out of the box. So I'd just like to uh, wrap up at this point. So uh, thanks for your attention. I'm going to put this, the slides back on. So as I said, this was an overview. So if you want a more detailed uh, demonstration, please uh, contact Don and the team and they'll be able to help you with that. So just to finish off with a few more slides, how, how does it fit? Um, well, I think it's a good fit with your existing processes. Um, even with different illustration programs you might already have, it still gives you uh, some ways of getting files over via the CGM format so you could work side by side with it. I think it's a really good tool for the illustrator and writer. It's very straightforward to use. So technical writers, probably not too familiar with illustration techniques, begin, can begin to use it very quickly because of the isometric grid and so forth. Advanced functionality, uh, data exchange, graphic editing, the call-out tool, hotspotting, and obviously the compliance to the specifications. So in summary, as we said right at the outset, that the, there's different scenarios for when you produce different uh, when you're producing technical illustrations or graphics. Uh, the source might actually uh, of the information can vary, so you need really need good um, input and output um, formats or good support of them. Uh, we would also say vector is is the preferable format, but if you have raster, you can also work with that within the software. And primary output considerations is you want to reuse this information. Uh, we'd also say you want to choose a format that, that, that can go, you can edit and you can actually publish. So that's where we really see CGM fitting into this, is that you can both edit it and you can publish it. So you only have one file to manage as opposed to uh, probably two different formats. And really CGM does provide that ability. So now I'd like to open up to some questions. I'm going to ask Don just to unmute his mic at this point, just to help with this one, if he will. Okay, so um, we have a comment, as I think, the, firstly, then a question. And I think it was somebody who did join um, but couldn't say for the entire webinar, the will, and the answer is there is a recording or will be a recording available uh, after the presentation today. In fact, we did answer that uh, online. So, hold on, I've got an, uh, another question here for you. Uh, can you import the IsoDraw file format into Visex Edit? I'm assuming that's native format. Um. Yes, we, we can uh, import the, uh, you know, CGMs created for MySidraw. Uh, of course, we can we can open those and we're fully compatible with those. Uh, the ISO files, of course, are, are strictly ISO, they're proprietary, um, so we can't open those. But um, uh, so you would have to use IsoDraw to open the ISO file and save it as CGM and then we can open it. Okay. So um, you should the integrity of the file should stay in place as well. Is that is that correct? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. That's correct. Okay. We we obviously briefly saw the uh, the 3D side, uh, and that was a DWG. Are, are you looking to support any other 3D CAD formats in the future for Visex Edit? Well, we're looking, first of all, to just enhance the DWG more so that you can actually break the objects apart, the 3D uh, solid objects apart. And um, and then the next step would be we're looking to support the open 3D formats like uh, 
um, I just in STEP, which is an open, a more modern version uh, for th exchanging 3D models that's supported by all the CAD systems, um, you know, high-end CAD systems. Okay. So that's our that's our plans there. Great. And um, there's a, a final question here that I have at the moment is uh, SVGs kind of kind of a hot topic. Uh, what's your strategy for supporting SVG, the SVG format in VizX Edit? Well, of course, we, we, um, we output SVG now currently, uh, but we're also looking at adding the ability to, to read SVG. Uh, in other words, if somebody wanted to work uh, purely in SVG, they could have, um, they could have ability to round trip the SVGs, you know, save them out of, out of um, our VizX edit and then come back and edit them later or take SVGs maybe from Illustrator or something like that. So yeah, we're, we're looking to try to do more with SVG. Okay, thank you. That was uh, all the questions we had today. Thanks for everybody who participated in that. Uh, if you do have any further questions, then I would suggest that you um, email uh, Don uh, directly. You will receive an email following the webinar uh, probably tomorrow, so it'll have Don's email address on there. So if you don't want to ask a question in this environment, please do follow in the webinar. So we just have some closing information. Um, we can discover more about Larson's software technology at cgmlarson.com, so that's the website. And we did mention the recording. There will be a link to the recording in the email, which will usually goes out the day after the webinar, so you'll probably receive that tomorrow. All the materials will be available probably later today, so the slides that I presented will be on the SlideShare site. So the, this is the, the link to the site, if you just want to make a note of that. And please follow uh, Larson on Twitter. You, CGM Larson is the address. So we release, uh, or Donnelly releases a lot of information through there for the webinars and different topics, uh, obviously around CGM and illustration and so forth. And finally, there will be um, another event on, uh, the next event is on May the 11th, 2016. It will be an informational webinar. Um, we, uh, the topic is to be confirmed, but I think Don has a good idea what it is, but um, we'll release information on that shortly. So again, join on Twitter or watch your email for that particular event. It will be informational. It won't be about one particular product. So um, thank you, Don. I'll just let you close and um, thanks for inviting me on today. Okay, thank you Dave, very good job. Okay, so thanks again and uh, thanks Don and I'll now end the webinar, thank you.